I, I, whatever you're doing doesn't make any sense. I was wrong. He was right, right? I mean, that's just, uh, he kind of uh, had this big vision about what he was doing. He saw a lot of things coming. And I was much more focused on this whole bank enterprise side of things because of where I worked. And Joe figured out that this was a bigger game and, you know, this was about the internet. And, and I got into this crazy debate with Joe in, in, in Luxembourg. And I told him that whatever he was doing was effectively, didn't make any sense, right? And so he kind of liked, so Joe is, Joe is, Joe is this Zen master kind of guy. He really liked what I had to say. And, and he thought there was a different perspective on this whole technology and everything. And, and then I met him at Consensus and, and he, he was hiring anyone who was any good at this thing, right? So at that point, Consensus was really growing very fast. And he connected with me and he was like, why don't you come on board? And I was very fortunate to be part of that team because, you know, at the time, anybody, a lot of good developers, especially developers, right, wanted to go work for Consensus. A lot of good startups wanted to be part of Consensus venture ecosystem, mainly because Joe was such an inspirational, yeah. you know, long horizon leader. He had this, uh, this and he was investing in complete moonshots, right? Yeah. So in true visionary things that uh, were so different from anything that anyone in enterprise was doing. So that was really inspiring, to be honest, right? And, and it was great to be part of that ecosystem. And it, it felt uh, inspiring and it kind of drew a lot of energy and, and emotions out of you. You know, you kind of believed in, and I still believe in a lot of what Joe is doing. That's fantastic. So it was that the key component because a lot of people talk about Ethereum's core advantage of, Obviously, it's a first mover in terms of smart contracts, but on top of that, people say the backing in terms of the amount of engineers and developers. Was it Joe's vision and his personality that brought the engineers to come? Not over? just Joe, in fact, right? So Ethereum was uh, very lucky to have a lot of strong leaders, yeah, right? Vitalik, Charles, for example. Vitalik, Let's John, start with yeah, Vitalik. Yeah. I mean, there was this uh, developer guy who felt like uh, a developer who was a developer that everybody could rally around. You, you know, if you are a developer, and I spent most of my career being a developer before I got into sales and consulting. And uh, if you were a developer, you looked at him and you're like, he was like the Mark Andreessen of our era, right? You looked at Vitalik and you were like, he's one of us. And developers uh, rallied around him. Then Joe did something very, very interesting, right? Joe figured out, uh, Joe's uh, critical insight was that he figured out that two things were really required to make Ethereum work. One was infrastructure, right? So things like Infura, uh, things like MetaMask, right? So the core components that made it possible for developers to interact with the blockchain. And the second thing was applications. Applications. You know? So, I mean, okay, you build the network. Let's say you have AT&T's phone lines, right? But if nobody's using, you don't have the end telephone, you don't have this, I mean, smartphones and you have all this wireless network what is it worth so so joe joe's genius wasn't really and and there were a lot of other good people right gavin and yeah, uh, so, so ethereum was very gavin lucky later, ethereum was yeah, yeah. Uh, i have to be careful with that <laughs> so i love gavin by the way so you know so so i think ethereum was very lucky to have a lot of really strong personalities that uh, didn't necessarily get along with each other but had very different perspectives and contribution to the whole thing. And but, but I think Joe did a lot, right? Joe was instrumental in building a company, a community. Uh, he had this consistent messaging about this, you know, making the world a better place. So, and it was really, really important when all the regulators and everyone was looking at this whole new technology with suspicion. And you had this Bitcoin community really getting excited about disrupting the banks and you know, revolution and fucking the system over. Joe was coming in with messages which were about, you know, making the world a better place, making humanity a better place. So, so I think Joe's messaging, his mm. marketing, his ability to really build a community and infrastructure was incredible. So Joe, Joe gets a lot of credit in my book.